For 12.5, we're going to solve one-step inequalities by adding or subtracting. Before we do that, let's just quickly review. If you can solve x plus 2 equals 3 by doing the inverse operation to find out that x equals 1, you can do this section. It's the same thing. The only thing we're going to do differently is replace that equal sign with a, an inequality and you still have to do the inverse operation. So the inverse operation of addition is subtraction, and the inverse operation of subtraction is addition. Real quick, let's throw in some vocabulary words. We're going to use the addition and subtraction property of inequality, which is similar to what we did up here, which is the subtraction property of equality. All it means is you can add or subtract by the same number on both sides of an inequality, and the inequality will still be true. Just like we did up here with the equality, we subtracted negative two or subtracted two from both sides, and we still had a true equation. So down here in the examples, when we're talking about the addition and subtraction property of inequality, you'll notice how we're adding or subtracting from both sides of various inequalities, and the inequalities are still true. Okay, so example one, go ahead and split your workspace in half. We're going to solve and then graph. So we have to review from last chapter or last section that you're going to use an open dot if your inequality sign is less than or greater than, and you're going to do a closed dot for less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Okay, so here's my equation. I have c or inequality, excuse me, I have c minus 17 is less than or equal to negative 6. Okay, my job is to undo that subtraction. Well, I undo the subtraction by adding 17 to both sides of this inequality. And I know that negative 17 and 17 go to 0, so I'm left with c is less than or equal to a negative, seven, a negative 6 plus 17, that's different sign. So different sign subtract. So 17 minus 6 is 11. And we keep the sign of the higher number, so that would be positive. So C is less than or equal to 11. And when I graph it, I draw my number line. I'm going to put 11 in the middle. and put in my numbers around it. And since I'm dealing with a less than or equal, my dot on the 11 is going to be a filled in dot. I look at my inequality, and that arrow is going to go to the left. Okay, let's try one on your own. I've got 65 is less than k plus 54. And just like when we were doing equations, this one's kind of reflected backwards. It's called a symmetric inequality where k is on the right-hand side over here, whereas on the other ones that we've been solving, the variable's on the left-hand side. So before you get too caught up in this, you can go ahead and rewrite this as k plus 54, but you have to be careful because that sign also has to flip around to 65. So in the first example, the way we had it written here, the hungry, hungry alligator mouth was flipping towards, it was trying to eat the 65. So when we flip the inequality, we have to do the sign flipped so that it's still trying to eat the 65. Okay, so pause the screen, go ahead and solve this, and check back in. Okay, my inverse operation for adding 54 is subtracting 54. I'm going to do that to both sides. And I know positive 54 and negative 54 subtract a 0. And I have k is less than 11 as my solution. So when I go to graph this, I'm going to create my number line very much like what I did before. Add in my numbers above and below 11. Now this time, since the inequality sign is a less than sign, it is going to be an open dot on 11. 
and I can do my arrow test, which tells me that my arrow is going to go to the left, just like before, except that the dot is changed. Let's do two more examples. Step it up a notch with our numbers here. We have y plus 4 and 3 fourths is greater than or equal to 1 and 1 eighth. Now here we don't have to worry about graphing. All we need to worry about is solving. So I, so I need to think of my inverse operation here for adding 4 and 3 fourths. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 4 and 3 fourths from both sides. Since I have a smaller number that I'm subtracting from, I need to use my keep change change and change that into a positive 1 and 1 eighth plus a negative 4 and 3 fourths. So over there in my thinking bubble, we need to find common denominators before we do fraction operations. So I'm going to line it up 4 and 3 fourths minus 1 and 1 eighth. Think about my common denominators. Well, 8 is a common denominator, so I only have to rewrite the top fraction. So that becomes 4 and 6 eighths minus 1 and 1 eighth. Subtract your fractions, that's 5 eighths. And then subtract your whole number, that's 3. But you have to remember that the negative fraction was the larger fraction, so this would be negative 3 and 5 eighths. So back over here, let's do the math, show that those inverse operations go to 0. And I'm left with y is greater than or equal to negative 3 and 5 eighths. Now you try one on your own, and again, like example 1, it's going to be a symmetric equation, or symmetric inequality, excuse me, be negative 150 is less than or equal to t. Hold on. It'll be equal to t plus 92. So the full inequality, again, is negative 150 is less than or equal to t plus 92. All right, go ahead and solve this, then pause and come back and check in. Okay, I'm going to reflect this equation, so t plus 92. I've got to flip that sign again so that it's still pointing towards where the t is, and that would be negative 150. Inverse operations would be subtracting 92. Keep change change or show that those cancel to zero. I'm left with t is greater than or equal to. And then on the right hand side, keep change change my signs. So negative 150 plus negative 92, those are same signs. We're going to add. And that gives me negative 242 once I keep that sign. How'd you do? Okay, example three. Yesterday's high temperature was 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Tomorrow's weather forecast includes a high temperature that is no more than 12 degrees warmer than yesterday's. What high temperatures are forecast for tomorrow? Okay, so since yesterday's temperature was 30 degrees Fahrenheit, we can't have any more than 12 degrees more than that. We know that we can't go any higher than 42 degrees Fahrenheit. So we need to write this as an equation or as an inequality. So tomorrow's temperature can be no more than and no more than that would be less than or equal to 42 degrees Fahrenheit. It can be 42 degrees Fahrenheit. It can be less than 42 degrees Fahrenheit, but it can't be more than. That does it for solving equations or solving inequalities with addition or subtraction. It's very similar to solving equations. You do your inverse operation 
and you box in your answer.